All right, in this video, we're going to be developing a corner piece based upon the first asset. So shift duplicate, shift duplicate. Okay, this piece, I'm just going to group together just for right now. So group it, then modify center pivot it and then I'm able to rotate it on the pivot there. In this case I want negative uh, 90. Okay, jump to my top view, hit 7. Oops. There we go. Now I can move this piece into position. back to six on the keyboard. I accidentally put that in wire shading mode or okay, a little, little back. Then I'm going to move this sheet forward. Just like that. Then try to move this in as much as I can. Now there's bound to be some kind of adjustments that's going to happen here. So keep in mind, you know, all this is pretty loose as far as the interpretation of it. If you go to 5 on the keyboard, you can get rid of the transparency sorting stuff. And if you do the back face on culling, oh, I guess I don't have to worry about that now. There we go. That works out pretty good. All these need to be on the other side of this. This is what really is nice about going into five every once in a while. So you can see these flaws. The transparency does throw you quite a bit. If you want to kill the transparency on certain things, here's a way to do that. If you go to the barbed wire, and go down to transparency you can actually break this connection and that'll fix that just for a little bit while you get everything situated so now if I go six on the keyboard you can see that those pieces uh, like the actual metal part right here don't have the transparency anymore and I can just focus in on the actual fence part and sometimes that's important you know just getting that out of the way all right, now this part right here is kind of tricky. Uh, we're going to take and go to the edge and we're going to pull this out and just kind of stretch this texture by a little bit on this side. I'm going to go this way on this one. I'm going to go a little further than what is needed on both sides. Okay. And then what I like to do is because I got this little tiny gap in here, I'm going to put an edge loop in the area. I'm going to put it right down the center mark of all these links. I'm going to do that both on this one and this one. OK. 
Okay. Then what I'll do is take this edge right here and bring it like that and then back. Okay, same with this one. I'll take its edge, push it back, and then back. Okay, what is that doing? Well, it'll make it look like the texture when you go around the corner is still attached and it looks like it wraps all the way around. See? Pretty neat, right? Just a little of adjustment right here. Open this up just a skosh. Alright, so it looks like it's actually melded in quite nice. Cool. So that's how you get it to wrap around a corner. Okay, well, that doesn't fix this problem, however. This problem's a little bit tricky. So barbed wire, let's put the transparency back on that. How you do that is you get it down to your playground by middle mouse button clicking and dragging and map it out. And then you go into this one, middle mouse button click and drag it, and you notice transparency. So you attach it to transparency and that'll reattach it here. This one is more of an issue so I'm going to have to wireframe on shade it. And I'm going to do a vertice going to 7 and I need to put this one here. Then I need to put this one here. I'll need to put this one here. And I'll need to put this one Come on, vertice. There we go. Here. So I'm going to make a kind of a 45 degree angle based upon these two. Then I'm going to do something special with the UVs. I think this is the hardest part only because it's hard to keep jumping into vertice, vertice. So I need this one. A uh, four on the keyboard will help this. So I'm just trying to meet in the middle based upon these two linear paths here. There we go. Good. Six on the keyboard. Now what I'm going to do is something special with the UVs. Just on these two parts. So object mode, I'll highlight this one window UV texture editor and here's my UVs for that I need this edge okay that edge is located on this side and what I'm going to do is take the UVs and move them this way just like that and then I'm going to do that to the other side do, do, do. So this side would be this side. I just know that because I've done this before. There we go. I'm just going to push it past. Alright, look at that. Now it wraps around the corner. Now that doesn't make sense too much because there is no bar there. Alright, so how do I get a bar? Well, this is what I usually do. I steal. Um, Shift duplicate, Shift D, uh, mesh separate, modify center pivot, push it back, delete the rest. Oh, I'm missing a part here. Sorry. 
back that up a little bit. There's actually two parts that make that up. It's that little collet that I keep forgetting. Mesh combine. There we go. Modify center pivot. Move that back. Get rid of this stuff. Delete it. And there we go. I got this little arm armory bar. I can see a professional fence maker right now just passing out going armory bar. What the heck is an armory bar? go and if you wanted to you know you could take these the vertice on um, both of these you know you can kind of move it in if you wanted to just to make that soft present a feel but I'm gonna keep it the way it is maybe I'll change it when I get everything combined alright so there we go we have this awesome chain link fence as a corner piece now. Now we have to play test it a little bit and that's in the next video. Play testing occurs that when we have to figure out if it's going to work as an overall game asset. Uh, can I duplicate a huge fence area with just these three pieces or two pieces?